Was there a link between Hitler and the alien? Could it be that the secret doctrine of Nazi ideology was imposed on him by an alien society? Could Hitler have contact with aliens? Or is it a total influence of an occult satanic religion? There is a theory that Adolf Hitler was the messenger through whom the message of hatred, oppression and genocide was spread to all those who did not belong to the Aryan race. It was just a crazy myth about a blue-eyed blonde warrior, superhuman, who was superior to the rest. There is also such a theory that Hitler came into contact with an alien group, which he subjected to and was one of the members of the satanic UFO cult society and Satan himself. The Nazis themselves claimed that the alien society was the source of their ideology and the power of their organization. They said that the Nazi ideology was the result of extraterrestrial influence. Of the cult of mysticism. The Nazis call their occult idols, secret aliens, secret underground irons, underground superheroes. Hitler believed in their existence and claimed to have known one of them. Some reports claim that, thanks to their help, Adolf Hitler was able to avoid capture by US supporters and allies. Indeed, historical records state that the Allies never found his body. Hitler's suicide was originally invented to suppress public concern that such a person could avoid persecution and could pose a threat to a new world war. Reports contain information that the Nazis expected revenge for their failed defeat in World War II and were preparing for World War II. The Nazis claimed that their superhumans, the underground superhumans, were the creators of the Aryan race, which Hitler believed to be a pure race, while everyone else in the world was viewed as inferior genetic mutations. They claimed that the secret doctrine of the Nazis was imposed by the aliens and they planned to recommit the genocide in order to purify the humanity of all those who were not Aryans. The best Nazi leaders who worshipped the occult religion and embodied the satanic spirit believed that the underground supremacists had returned to Earth to begin their program of racial cleansing and establish a millennial Reich. These Nazi beliefs are very similar to other religions, which teach people to prepare for the future arrival of supernatural beings. It is believed that they will rule the eternal utopian Earth. As in other similar religions, the coming of the Nazi supermen will coincide with God's final judgment. Nazi mysticism has found support from Christian leaders who claim that supremacists rule from the earth. During the first Nazi uprisings, Hitler declared, the army we created is growing day by day. I have a proud hope that one day the hour will come when the battalions will be transformed into regiments, regiments into subunits that the old flags will fly again and we will face the last great divine judgment. The National Socialist idea of creating the image of an ideal Aryan man or woman was reflected in the eugenics program, which consisted of selecting healthy, strong people with the necessary characteristics of people, even before they were born, people with hereditary disabilities, physically or mentally handicapped were prohibited from breeding. Although Hitler lost the war, at the urging of the foreigners with whom the Nazis spoke, those chosen by Satan were to succeed in the Fourth Reich. Hitler believed in Satan and his alien demons, who looked tall, blonde-haired, and blue-eyed. It has been argued that Nazi technology developed under the leadership of aliens. The Nazis, before any other country, invented radar in 1933. Infrared sensors, heavy water and more. If anyone in the world had access to extraterrestrial technology, the Aryans were. Some official historical evidence suggests that Hitler did not actually commit suicide. In 1952, Dwight David Eisenhower said, We have not been able to find any evidence of Hitler's death. Many believe he fled Berlin. When President Truman asked Joseph Stalin at the 1945 Potsdam Conference to answer whether Hitler had died, Stalin replied, No. Marshal Grigory Zhukov, whose troops occupied Berlin after a lengthy and thorough investigation in 1945, declared categorically, we have not found anybody that could belong to Hitler. In Nuremberg, U.S. Executive Advisor Thomas Dodd said, no one can say he's dead. Zhukov said that perhaps Adolf Hitler's death did not happen at all, he just ran away. Lieutenant General Bedell Smith, Chief of Staff and then Director of the CIA, 
made a public statement on October 12, 1945, no one can say that Hitler is dead. Colonel Heimlich, the former head of US intelligence in Berlin, said after a thorough investigation in his report, there was no evidence to support Hitler's theory of death. Based on this evidence, no insurance company in America would have paid for Hitler's death. Photograph of a corpse that the Soviet authorities sent as the body of Adolf Hitler. An article in November 1949 read, The Nazis went underground and planned a third world war. Another August 1952 article, entitled Hitler Did Not Die, said, The fake death of Adolf Hitler in his Berlin bunker is the greatest deception in history. Hitler is not dead, he is alive, and today he is sending the Nazis underground. In the September 17, 1974 Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's As It Often Happens program, a professor, oral and maxillofacial surgeon at the University of California, Los Angeles School of Dentistry, said that Adolf Hitler ordered a special plane to disappear from Berlin in a direction unknown to all doctors and dental records, especially X-rays, of all prominent Nazis. He also said that the documents used to identify Hitler's body were recovered from memory by a dental assistant who disappeared and was never found. A zigzag editorial in Santiago, Chile, on January 16, 1948, described that on April 30, 1945, Captain Peter Baumgart took Adolf Hitler, his wife Eva Brown, and several loyal friends on a flight from the airport. Tempelhof in Tondern, Denmark, which is still controlled by Germany. From Tondern they took another plane to Christiansund in Norway, and from there an underwater convoy. The Jewish writer Michael Bar Zohar recalled that in 1943, Admiral Dernitz declared, the German submarine fleet is proud to have created an earthly paradise, an invincible fortress for the Fuera. He did not say in which part of the world this paradise existed, but it was quite obvious that in South America, the German writer Matten recalled what Admiral Dernitz had told the graduates of the naval cadets in Kiel in 1944, the German Navy continues to play an important role in the future. The German Navy knows all the secret places where the Führer is safe. There he can make his final preparations in complete peace. If we accept the assumption that Nazi Germany was under the influence of aliens and gained access to technologies that significantly extended life expectancy, then it can be assumed that the Nazis will try to achieve their ambitions and return the global power of the Aryan race. In turn, the other universe, whose symbol is the swastika, will win the final victory. Nazi space program, eight German technologies that stunned the Allies. Did the Nazis have a space program? Were Hitler's scientists able to carry out a mission to the moon? Did the Nazis get their hands on an alien technology that, through reversible engineering, they tried to turn into rockets and spaceships? Questions to which, as the years go by, we have more and more answers. We present to you eight German technologies that amazed the Allies and that formed the basis of the space programs of the USSR and the USA. Beginning in 1942-1943, the Nazi space program involved the development of propulsion devices, from the famous V-2 missiles, to jet fighters and the construction of flying sources. Developed at the Peenemünde and Nordhausen research centers, these technologies were designed to help the Nazis bomb American cities with the ultimate goal of winning the war. The most important members of the Nazi space program were secretly transferred to the Soviet Union and the United States after the war, Operation Paperclip and the effects were immediately apparent. The former V-1 and V-2 missiles became the basis from which the first ballistic missile and the first man-made object to make a suborbital flight were developed. Officially, the Nazi space program never existed. But there are reports of an alleged arrest of Wernher von Braun in an SS prison for using a Peenemunde facility to plan a spaceflight instead of developing weapons. All documents and plans found demonstrate the existence of such a program, including physical evidence, such as an area where anti-gravity shuttles could take off and land. At Peenemunde, the Army Research Center, in 1937 there were over 80 researchers, including Walter Dornberger, Georg von Tissenhausen and Wernher von Braun. 
The national socialist scientists who worked on this project were known as Pienemunders. Here it was the largest factory for the production of liquid oxygen and an extremely modern wind tunnel being able to simulate speeds of up to 10 Mach. The entire island was captured by the Allies on May 5, 1945. In order to protect the existing documentation, 14 tons of documents were hidden in the mines in the mountains, which would later be handed over to the American Secret Services. After the war, the port was a Soviet naval base until 1952, when it was returned to the East German Armed Forces. At first, the port facilities were used by the East German Coast Guard, new ones being built later. On December 1, 1956, the headquarters of the East German Coast Guard were established here. In 1992, a museum of the history of Nazi technology from the Second World War was opened in Pienemunde, right in the former control room of the old military industrial bunker. And among the exhibits are the famous V-1 missiles. The gas plant for the production of liquid oxygen is still in ruins, at the entrance to the locality. Rockets V. At the beginning of the war, Hitler did not consider the development of the missile program a priority, being confident in the final victory only with the conventional weapons of the Wehrmacht. The unfavorable turn of the Eastern Wehrmacht campaign led Hitler to reconsider his position on the missile program and to allow the development of V-2 missiles as weapons from December 22, 1942. The V-2 missile was the world's first long-range ballistic missile, although V-2 missiles are now considered short-range. It is also considered to be the first human object to enter outer space. The V-2 rocket is the ancestor of all modern rockets. Beyond the fact that it was a weapon, it is important to know that the V-2 rocket was the basis of the revolution in space exploration. However, we cannot ignore the fact that almost 20,000 prisoners from Nazi concentration camps died as a result of forced labor to build this revolutionary weapon. V-2 rockets were the first man-made rockets to reach space and exceed 100 kilometers above the Earth, the boundary between the atmosphere and space. Flying plates. There is also information about discoid-shaped ships, flying saucers, built by the Nazis before and during World War II as part of the Nazi space program. At the end of the war, the Germans destroyed these prototypes together with the construction schemes, but it seems that they were recovered by the American army which continued the projects in secret, in the famous Aria 51. The German Flying Sources program was initiated by officials of the Nazi party together with the occult societies Vril Gesellschaft, Thule and Luftwaffe. After the 1938 Antarctic expedition, the Germans set up the Hornebu and Vril Flying Sources in Neuschwabenland. In the book by the well-known German Jan van Helsing, Who Rules the Planet? He describes the discovery of a flying saucer that crashed in the Black Forest in 1936 and says that its technology was taken and combined with the information that the Vril Society received from the medium, called Hornebu. Hornebu 1 is said to have been the first large alien ship built in Germany. According to plans allegedly taken out of the SS secret files, Hornebu 1 was about 25 meters in diameter and appears to have first risen from the ground in August 1939, just a few weeks before the World War II. In addition to projects designed entirely by German engineers, in parallel the secret societies Vril and Thule were working on a project to build an apparatus capable of interstellar flight. Part of the Nazi space program. This project was started in 1922, but the aircraft called Genseats Flood Machine or JFM was apparently built in 1924. The project was inspired by the contacts of the mediums from Vril, Maria Orsic and Sigrun, with various entities from the Aldebaran civilization from the constellation Taurus. Located 65 light years from the Sun, following the information obtained by the medium Maria Orsic, the JFM device was equipped with a levitator, made by Schumann from the Technical University of Munich, which was to be perfected and named SM Levitator. Other evidence of the German Flying Saucer program can be found in the book German Secret Weapons in World War II published in 1955. In the chapter on flying saucers, author Rudolf Lussar writes, Slowly, 
The truth during the war, German researchers and scientists made the first moves in the direction of flying saucers. They have built and tested such almost miraculous devices. Meath made a 42-meter diameter disc-shaped plate into which adjustable planes were inserted. Schriever and Habermol took off with their first flying disc on February 14, 1945. In three minutes they reached an altitude of 12,400 meters and reached a speed of 2,000 kilometers per hour in horizontal flight. Flugelrad, Flugelrad I, 2, 3 were designed to use BMW turbojet engines for propulsion. Flugelrad IV-1, performed the first flight tests at Prague Kabylie Airport, Czech Republic in August and September 1943. Vril Raumschiff. The Vril disc-shaped aircraft construction program was designed by members of the Vril Gesellschaft between 1941-1945. All were powered by Vril Triebwerk EMG and Schumann SM levitators engines. The final plan was to build the Andromeda Girard aircraft in 1945, cylindrical in shape and 139 meters long. Once completed, it would have housed a Hornebu IV spacecraft and two Vril-2 aircraft capable of reaching Aldebaran, the brightest star in the constellation Taurus, located about 65 light-years from the Sun. The supreme dream of the Vril Gesellschaft. In an article on the design of the German electromagnetic flying sources for the August 1944 issue of Zeit und Schrift, researcher Ursula Seiler Spielmann wrote that after the success of the first levitation, Schumann continued to work on improvements to the so-called electromagnetic device. And in 1934 he completed his first experimental flying saucer, supposedly based on the anti-gravity effect, a ship called the Vril-1. The first manned flight took place in 1934. A man named Luther Weitz flew with this ship, but not in very good condition. It was difficult to direct. Weitz landed forcibly and fled the car, which destroyed itself. But at that moment, they knew they had reached somewhere. Research by Ursula Silas Spielmann has shown serious evidence that the limited success of Vril-1 was the beginning of a 10-year German government-sponsored flying saucer project which was to end only after the Nazis were ousted from power. At the end of World War II, Schriever Habermal, he was the best known of the German flying saucer projects. Part of the Nazi space program, 15 prototypes were built, named after engineers Rudolf Schriever and Otto Habermal, co-opted into the shipbuilding. According to Joseph Andreas Epp, Chief engineer of the project, the aircraft had a central cockpit surrounded by adjustable rotating takeoff valves and horizontal engines to propel the ship. Construction began between 1941 and 1943, apparently at Prague Bell Airport near Prague. It was originally a Luftwaffe project, which received technical assistance from Skoda, Junkers. Wilhelm Gustloff Verker. It was initially under the control of the Ministry of Armaments and War Production, during which time it was administered by engineer Georg Klein, then in 1944. It came under the control of the SS, especially in the sphere of competence of General Hans Kammler. Neath, the project, part of the Nazi space program was developed in 1942 by Richard Meath and Giuseppe Bellozzo, an Italian steam turbine engineer. Three such aircraft have been designed. The first was 15 meters in diameter, the second 50 meters, and the third 170 meters. The Nazis, educated by aliens. German researcher Friedrich Matten claims in a recent book in the United States that Nazi scientists came into contact with mysterious beings from other planets who gave them various technological information, including the secret of flying sources. Friedrich Matten states that before the end of World War II, Nazi researchers managed to build the first UFO. Using data and information provided by representatives of an extraterrestrial civilization, I am convinced that the Nazis managed to produce more than 10 such flying sources, which have been hidden for over 55 years, somewhere near the North Pole, Matten said in an interview. This information, although not proven, comes in support of other scientists who believe that the Nazis were educated by aliens.
In making these claims, researchers rely on the fact that before the outbreak of World War II, many prominent members of the Nazis were involved in occult activities and groups. One of the most well-known groups strongly claimed that the representatives of an ancient race had much more advanced technologies than those of the people of that time and lived in a secret underground region. This region was called Hyperborea and was located near the North Pole. The dream of the Nazi researchers was to create an alliance with these mysterious beings, from which to obtain the technology necessary for world domination. The information has never been considered true before. Matten claims that this contact took place and presents in support of his claim a series of recently discovered documents that mention several experiments carried out by the German engineer Victor Schauberger, who allegedly managed to create a kind of flying sources with the help of technologies that at that time they had not yet been discovered by mankind. I believe that at least a few Nazis managed to take refuge in this secret place at the North Pole and continued to develop UFOs. I don't know what happened to the mysterious beings that the members of the occult groups were referring to, but I'm convinced that there are people in that area. They may have a few dozen flying sources at their disposal and wait for the right moment to launch a new Blitzkrieg, according to Friedrich Matten. The German researcher also claims that the representatives of some countries, such as the USA, Great Britain or France, know the existence of this mysterious place at the North Pole. But they avoid doing more research, for fear of not discovering things that would provoke a wave of panic among Earthlings.